Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting for see, we're December 3rd, last Ooh. month of the year. Yeah, you know, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> you know, it's some got progress, I guess. We got the yeah. year. We're rolling back in after a holiday here in the US, getting back in the swing of things. Let's hop on in. We've got some new modules from our own Brendan Waters. We have a couple of new Windows privilege escalation modules, the uh, UAC protection bypassing. The first module targets the .NET profiler causing a trusted process, specifically the gpedit.msc, to load a user-controlled DLL. Good stuff. The second module exploits an auto-elevate feature in the Windows Backup System's sdclt.exe binary to run as a higher integrity process. These are fun things, and I think we'll have a demo of these. It's super cool. And adding to his recent password cracker lift that we talked about in our last demo meeting, Community contributor Hoodie added two new modules targeting Android devices. One module will gather pin and passcode hashes from a root session on a target Android device, and the other module will crack hashes gathered from a root uh, Android device using Hashcat. So super cool. Love that stuff. And let's see, we have a lot of other valuable work going on to talk about. Our own Shelby Pace added a new infrastructure for building shell payloads from C source code and a set of new encrypted stagers and shell payloads that take advantage of this new build system. The shell code is built at runtime with the MinGW W64 compiler toolchain, which is required in order to take advantage of these payload modules. If you'd like to learn more, Shelby wrote up a recent blog post with details posted on blog.rapid7.com. It's a really good read. And uh, in addition to this being a really nice addition of the framework, I think we'll have a demo of some of this too. It's super cool. Awesome. Community contributor B. Coles added reverse and bind payloads for the Java JavaScript, aka JJS, kind of an unfortunate name, command line tool that is distributed with JRE and JDK. Uh, it also sounds like this tool is installed by default in many cases, so you might keep an eye out for it on your Nix targets. Very cool. Community contributor Mangy Coyote, which is a great name, updated the SSH creds post gather module to not store public SSH keys, since they aren't the interesting ones anyway. Appreciate that. Our own Dean Welsh added web reporting methods to the Metasploit 5 data service, re-enabling reporting support for several web vuln modules with Metasploit 5. Good stuff there. Community contributor Matteo Cantoni updated the brute DERS auxiliary module to support a delay between connections and jitter on that delay value as well. Very nice. Community contributor B. Coles updated the Windows Gather enum host file post module to use the post exploitation API to work with both interpreter and shell session types. Dig it. And our own Jeffrey Martin improved some internals related to workspace and MSF5. Good stuff. Uh, see, and some more. Community contributor Ken LaCroix added documentation for 12 aux modules that did not have module documentation. Very much appreciate that. Our own Will Vu lended some clarity to the Blue Keep module around successful targeting, specifically for supported Windows 7 SD1 and Windows Server 2008 R2 targets. Always good to see clarity. And we'll also updated some of the print types and the double pulsar module to be more appropriate. Rounding out our list, our own Jeffrey Martin added new spec tests for a number of payloads, including Kingback, JJS, and steps for the new compiled C payloads. Testing coverage for the win. And some bug fixes. Community contributor Hoodie added a fix related to his new Android password modules to ensure correct hash format details are stored in the creds database, which is nice. Community contributor B. Coles updated the Windows Local Persistent Service and Windows Local Persistence Image Exec Options modules to only execute on interpreter sessions as cell sessions are not supported by these modules. Appreciate that. Community contributor Trolled Boys fixed a variable name in the SAP Management Con Brute Login Aux module, which corrects a runtime error, which we definitely appreciate that fix. And for details on recent framework activity, you can always check out the weekly Metasploit wrap-up blog post at blog.rapid7.com. And as always, a huge thanks to everybody who helps make Metasploit better through their contributions. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd say if, if anyone wants to help make um, more modules work with shell session types, um, the main functionality we really need is the ability for shell sessions to be able to upload binary files without losing characters on Windows. Ah, okay. That's actually the, the, the main bug of error there. So Good to know. if someone can figure out how to like base 64 encode, decode, something like that, that would be really cool. Oh, thank you, Brent. Y'all heard it here. Awesome. And with that, let's do some demos. 
this is actually uh, something that's landed to master, but didn't didn't make it into the release last Thursday. But it's definitely in master right now. It'll be in this, this Thursday's uh, cut. Um, but Christoph, do you want me to hand it over to you? Yes, please. Cool. All right. So, um, so yeah, this uh, this is um, a remote code execution on a WordPress plugin called uh, PlanView Activity Monitor. This is used to to track user activity on on uh, on, on a WordPress website or blog. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is a pretty basic. Um, remote code execution, which is located here. Uh, you have an, an IP tool, which is actually, you can look up um, and underneath it is executing dig and adding the IP directly. So there is no input, sanit uh, uh, input validation or sanitization. Uh, this is uh, how it works. So uh, yeah, so you can you can actually chain uh, shell command, shell command uh, with a, like a pipe or something like this. Um, for example, with a like ID, um, and yeah, so you have the results here. Yeah, <laughs> nice. That's classic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> old school. Yeah. So um, so the plugin, the um, the module. Sorry. Uh, so basic options. So you have a, a, pa a password, uh, username, the remote host, and remote for the virtual host if you need it. And uh, for the payload, so you set the uh, listen address port. This uh, this have this model has a, a check method, so you can actually check if it's vulnerable before executing it. They so check the, the version of the plugin. Um, and uh, here, here you go. So, let's see, All right? There you go. All right. So, um, I just wanted to to show you the payload executed on 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 the target. Here it is. So, yeah, this is the basic. Uh, pipe using, like you, you pipe the first the first comment with that <coughs> another one, and that's it. Cool. So if someone was looking for an IOC, they would just look at their process list and go, "Hey, look, there's some PHP evaluating some." Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> some basic. <laughs> cool. Super okay. cool. Any uh, any questions for Christoph? Going once. Oh, I I have one, a quick one. Um, so sometimes a, a problem with uh, running the interpreter through like a PHP web shell is um, there's a, usually like a timeout um, where uh, like after a minute or 10 minutes, something like that, your session will die because the, the web server will um, cause it to um, sort of the page render process will be like, oh, I've had enough time with that. Does this, just, does, is this able to kind of work around this? It kind of looks like it maybe spawn the sub shell. Um, so, um I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure about this one. Um, okay. I, I hadn't one. I had any, any issue with, with timeout uh, this plugin. Um, so I don't know. Maybe uh, Brandon, you have more information about this. Um, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll check back at the end of the demo. And we'll see if the shell's still open. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thank you, Christoph. And, and that's like, again, that's kind of a preview. That'll be, be in the list uh, when we go over uh, the next demo meeting, but it's in master right now if you want to clone master and play around with it. Super cool. All right. Compiled payloads. Shelby? Okay. Um, so yeah, we've been working on four payloads for a little bit. Um, so basically, I've already uh, generated one. Um, I have a handler running. Let's go to my Windows box and grab that payload right here. Execute it. And yeah, we got a session. So uh, it looks like a regular command shell. Uh, gonna run this a few times. Um, so basically, yeah, so it, it looks like a regular command shell, but um, there are a few differences than uh, most of the command shells that we have already in framework. Uh, one of those being that uh, it's 
uh, encrypting the communications. Uh, so you can see here, oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so I executed dir, you have data right here. Uh, you have what's, what's uh, the result, the command, uh, and you have the same command happening again. You have different results. Um, so that's, that's the first difference. Um, and then the second difference would be that uh, this is actually compiled instead of what we typically use, which is assembly. Um, so uh, I have that open over here. So um, it's just, yeah, basically a bunch of C code that's eventually just tacked on together to result in uh, a C file, uh, which should be, uh, So this is the, uh, the C file that uh, is generated once you actually uh, decide to create a payload, like through MSF Venom like I did previously. Um, and then it's compiled with MinGW and a few, uh, I guess, uh, options, some eight typical options. Um, and then, yeah, you get your, your position independent shell code. And yeah, I guess that's it. Can we look at the C code again? Mm -hmm. There's something sure. interesting I wanted to just, I think I saw in there. Um, down like the, the main function. Okay, that would be, oops. So if you scroll down a little bit, there's some pretty cool code that you added in here um, that uh, basically when you set up a, a Windows reverse shell, a lot of times the way that the, the event loop works is it just kind of connects the input pipe from like the command process to the socket and those things are just sort of connected straight together. But there were some challenges with, with now that there's encryption, right? Yeah. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, sure. So basically we'd have to set up two pipes, um, basically. So um, like the standard output of say CMD, uh, the command prompt needs to be um, first encrypted uh, and then sent over to framework. Um, and so once that's in every framework, obviously it's encrypted. So we need uh, to decrypt it that way. Um, and then once say a framework user uh, wants to send a command back to uh, the, the target, uh, they need to also uh, encrypt their data. Uh, once that comes back over, it needs to be decrypted, decrypted. So yeah, those pipes are set up in a way to allow that to happen. The proxies that offer the encrypted decryptance. <laughs> Yeah. Coming or going, that's cool. Yeah. Any uh, any other additional questions for Shelby? So this is really cool stuff, and like I mentioned, there's a there's a really good blog post up on blog.rapid7.com um, from I think November 21st uh, that it, uh, it was posted that Shelby wrote up about it. You can learn more about it there. Yeah, I'm really kind of interested in what folks in the community will think also about being able to extend these kind of payloads to have other kinds of functionality as well. Since it's built in C, it's a lot easier than writing it all on a simple. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Thanks. Cool, thanks, Shelby. Mm -hmm. All right, who wants a UAC bypass? Thank you. I want everybody, one. Everybody gets one. Yeah. Hey, Brendan. That was this your is the .NET profiler one. <laughs> this is the .NET profiler one. Uh, this works in kind of a neat little way. Uh, the common language runtime for Microsoft allows you to designate a profiling com object so that anytime something that launches the, the common uh, <clears throat> language runtime uh, can basically be debugged or checked up on while it's running. Uh, one of the fun things is this com object can be a DLL file. And in this, this module actually abuses that by putting up a DLL payload <clears throat> writing a registry key to denote it as the profiler for the common language runtime, and then launching an EXE that gets auto-elevated that loads that profiler. <laughs> nice. Uh, in this case, we're using, I uh, believe, <coughs> uh, group policy editor. But you don't have to use group policy editor. It just has to be something that auto-elevates, is trusted, and will run the common uh, language runtime. If you want to go ahead and give it a start. And so this is running on a Windows 10 64-bit machine. I think this is an unpatched version of release 1803. Uh, and you know, nothing up my sleeve here, get system fails as the regular user. 
<coughs> it's a really straightforward, just give the payload. Uh, you have to put the binary file up on disk. It goes ahead and writes all of the uh, values that need to be written to the registry. We've got the interpreter session open, but there's a timeout that's gonna happen because we'll go ahead and remove all of those registry keys that we created so that we have you know, some semblance of, of OPSEC. But it does require manual cleanup of the DLL file. And here you go. And now we can go ahead and get system. Nice. Cool. And since that's writing to a HK current user, then that means that any user can, can write these registry entries. Or is there any limitation there? I think you may have to be local admin. I don't know. Okay. I didn't check, check that. And the second one is uh, a little bit simpler. Uh, the premise behind it is the SD, uh, SDCLT is part of the Windows backup program, which you know obviously has to ele elevate to see everything that's on the disk. In this case, uh, for reasons that I'm not entirely sure of, if you place a binary file at a certain registry location, it will just launch it as an elevated process. I, it's a feature. So. If you want to go ahead and launch it, we upload a uh, just an EXE payload and place it in the right location in the uh, registry. And so again, this is the, the exact same for version of Windows. These both only work with Windows 64-bit. They could work with 32-bit, but I just didn't add those targets. And again, just payload name, which is, you know, by default, it'll be random. Watch my typos. <laughs> I was wondering about that L host. Uh, syntax. I, I caught myself, <laughs> except I didn't have another typo. <laughs> He's using IPv3. <laughs> Less popular. Yeah. And just like the other, when we run it, it goes ahead, it sets everything up. It places the uh, the binary on disk, it sets up all of the uh, registry, com uh, the registry changes that need to be made. Um, and again, it does a, a short timeout before you get your prompt because it wants to make sure that we clean everything up that we can. Uh, and as before, you have to clean up the binary because we're running as the binary right now. So, so if we taught interpreter how to delete itself before it exits itself, would that would we be able to solve the cleanup problem? Yep. Cool. That's a good idea. Anyone out there who wants to submit a PR, there, there's a, that'd be a cool thing to add, <laughs> self-deletion of payloads. The bright side is in this particular case, you are a system, so you can inject <clears throat> into another process and then delete the binary off disk. Oh, uh, yeah, that's cool. If all we were on Unix, we could just unlink. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I was going to yeah. call out, too, that you've, you've had your finger, hands in a bunch, a number of uh, the UAC bypass modules over the last few months, right, Brendan? Yes. Yeah, super cool. Awesome. We need auto bypass. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, demo of some of these, these new JJS payloads from B. Coles. Sure. Do a thing. I click the link. One Thanks. Moment, please. So yeah, uh, B. Coles put up these uh, new payloads for us, and they do target uh, the JJS tool that comes with the Java runtime environment. I'm gonna look at my notes real quick to make sure I'm not saying the things that aren't true. Uh, yeah, JRE8 
it's is standard. They may be deleted at some point, but right now it's it's standard with JRE eight, and these payloads have a lot of bad chars in them. But at the same time, it doesn't hurt to have them in our back pocket if we need them. Yeah, well said. I run the thing. Sure. All right. And so this is just set up as a, a listening shell. Uh, I did a, I just dropped the uh, binary on disk. You can see in this particular case, uh, we're running uh, Ubuntu 64, 18.04. And we get a shell session. Nice. Awesome. Thanks, Brendan. You're very welcome. Excellent.